So every week, at least 50 children are backed over because a driver didn't see them. Two children died this week here in Florida. A two-year-old was killed in the driveway of a home on Wednesday as an SUV was backing up in Lakewood Ranch, which is just northeast of Sarasota. And then Tuesday, a six-year-old was backed over in a parking lot in Pensacola. Amber Rollins is the director of Kids and Car Safety and is joining us via Zoom this morning. Good morning. Thanks for being with us. Good morning. Thanks oh, for having me. I hate to see these kinds of tragedies because they are so preventable. So let's talk just a little bit about the kids who are particularly most at risk. This is most common with children who are younger than five years old. Would you explain how something referred to as bye-bye syndrome can really be a factor in these tragedies? Yeah, so there's one particular circumstance that we see more than others, and we've given it a name, bye-bye syndrome. And what happens is you've got a family at home. One of the parents is usually a parent or a caregiver is leaving the house and the little one wants to say bye-bye or they don't want mommy or daddy to leave. And so as that person is leaving, they sneak out the front door. A lot of times the person inside doesn't even know that the child is capable of going out the door on their own at this point. And before the person inside realizes they're gone, they've already gotten outside into the path of that vehicle that's pulling out the driver, because of the large blind zone that exists around every single vehicle, is not able to see that child and runs over them before anybody has a clue that that child has even left the house. And, and you mentioned blind zones. Let's talk a little bit about that if we could. I mean, they exist, obviously, when a driver's backing up. All vehicles have them, really even regardless of whether or not you have a backup camera installed in your car. Yeah, so even if you have a backup camera, they're not foolproof. And we see even more children killed in frontovers today than we do in backovers. Um, because of cameras, they have brought that number of backovers down, but they're not perfect. And so you want to be extra careful, especially if you have children. But children are everywhere. If you don't have children, you could still have a child run into your driveway or in a parking lot. You know, they're everywhere. And you just can't avoid hitting something that you can't see. Yeah, and you know, 15 feet behind you, you have to think about the sides as well. You can't see on the side and a child can then run at the last minute in the back, you know, and behind the car. Um, shorter drivers have larger blind zones. 60% of backovers involve large vehicles. For our viewers at home who have larger cars, you've got multiple, you know, kids and you need to fit them all in there, particularly with the car seats. So the backup cameras, they are required in all new vehicles, but what about people who have older cars? They can still install them, can't they? Absolutely. You can purchase a backup camera online or at your local auto shop and have them installed for a relatively low price now that they're standard in all vehicles. And I would highly recommend anybody that doesn't have one, especially if you have kids or grandkids, to get one today. Oh, for sure. I mean, no doubt. Any added level of protection, you know, you, you, you just it's just such a fantastic idea. You know, I, I, I think that kids in general, too, so let's talk a little bit about, you know, kids who may be walking to school, for example, and they're on the sidewalk, which crosses over driveways. I think that there's a tendency, or when they're riding their bike, they just kind of assume that the driver sees them. Yeah, so especially young children, age, you know, five or six and younger, they don't really have that cognitive ability yet to understand danger and you know they're impulsive so they're going on their bike and they're not paying attention to if somebody's backing out or pulling into a driveway so we really want to spend time at an early age i mean as young as one talking to our kids about certain rules and things that they need to know like even though you can see the driver the driver can't see you and we want to revisit these topics regularly. Another thing you can talk to kids about is how can you tell that a vehicle that's parked is going to get ready to move? You can look for the brake lights. You can look to see if there's exhaust coming out. You can use your ears to hear if the engine's on. And just, you know, keep these topics top of mind. Review them regularly. We talk about it every time we walk through the parking lot with my son. And um, he's well aware after seven years of reviewing these rules and ideas. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I always told my kids, if you do not make eye contact with the driver, they don't see you, <laughs> right? And I think that you yeah. bring up a really valid point with your son about parking lots, too. I mean, there's a tendency. I was just with my three-year-old niece yesterday walking into the grocery store in a parking lot, and I insisted upon holding her because I didn't want her to walk in the parking lot. You know, there are some things that we can do ourselves and teach them as well. 
Yeah. As a, just a general rule of thumb, if at all possible, don't ever let your little toddler's feet hit the ground in a parking lot. Even if you're holding their hand, they can break away from you. This happens all the time. Put them in the shopping cart, grab the stroller. Uh, if you have to hold hands, but anything you can do to be holding them and not giving them that opportunity to break away is the best thing. And one more thing you can do at home, this is really important to prevent that bye-bye syndrome, child-proof your home. Yeah. You can buy these little stick-on door alarms to put on the doors that go to the outside of your house. You can order them online for as little as $30. And it's just a little sticker that goes on the door and the door frame. Then you plug in a little sound machine to a wall. Anytime that door opens, you're going to get a chime, sort of like some people have built into their alarm system at their home. And that's going to alert you if somebody opens a door that you're not expecting them to open the door, it's like if the toddler is going to sneak out the front. I highly recommend using those alarms. You can also get those childproof knobs, um, but I don't like to rely on those solely. The alarms are really a great audio cue that something has gone awry. Additional layers of, of protection, uh, you know, and that's always a theme, whether it be backing up or, or also pool safety and water safety. Amber, thank you for your time this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you.